Hi, I'm Raven Cook, a museum educator at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. And this video is a part of your Actions Speak Louder Than Words, My Museum Classroom Kit. In this segment, we will be looking at Our Town by Carrie James Marshall. As we look together, it will be helpful for you to have paper and something to write with as you respond to the prompts in the video. Please pause the video to get those things now if you need to. This video is jam packed with fun information and activities, so feel free to pause or rewind the video at any time as you need to. Before we get started discussing this work of art, let's take a few moments to let our eyes wander all over it to gather useful details. First, notice the colors. What colors do you see? Please use your paper to jot down observations. Marshall uses yellows in the ribbons on the trees and the bluebirds' mouths flying, green on the grass, and pinks and oranges in the sunset behind the community. The viewer may start noticing colors clustered together like red, white, and blue. In the background, red, white, and blue is on the large house with the pool and swing set in the back. The house with its red roof, white body, and blue shutters provides an idyllic scene compared to the other houses missing those blue windows. Red, white, and blue is also on the clothing of playing children in the foreground of the canvas. In this artwork, Carrie James Marshall uses his canvas to challenge the audience to see areas where our country has presented words about equality and justice and how our actions can help the country live up to those words. He uses young people to draw you into the image and challenge your eyes to move around the artwork. While Marshall is not telling his audience a way to think, he encourages them to start a conversation that leads to change. What actions can you do to help your town live up to words like equality and justice. We also notice that Marshall uses another important color, black. By painting the figures in the artwork black, Marshall creates an opportunity to discuss how African-Americans continue to fight for representation in the visual arts. Despite a long struggle, African-American artists have broken down many barriers, encouraging Americans to unite how can you be a part of that effort to make sure all people, despite differences, are treated equally in your community? We can all be a part of making sure all people are treated equally. This work takes courage and understanding, but never give up. You can use your art, voice, writing, or anything you are passionate about to encourage people to remember that actions speak louder than words. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and let's meet our guest artist, Kenya Christian. Hi, everyone. Hi, Kenya. So if you just want to share with us, um, yeah, kind of what drew you to being an artist, what you enjoy about it. Right. So my entire family is pretty artistically inclined. So from an early age, I was drawn to um, following in their footsteps, but professionally, my artwork or my art didn't really get started until um, I became a graphic designer about 20 some odd years ago. We'll just leave it at that. I don't want to give away my age too much. But I started a graphic design and page layout working for a yearbook publishing company. And I just grew from there. From did When I moved here to Arkansas, I worked for a couple of printers. I worked for a trade show exhibit company from a marketing agency and just really over the years honed my graphic design skills and then started to branch into more digital art um, with the mouse and then with the pen and then I changed over to a paintbrush about 15 years ago and I've never looked back. That's awesome. Um, I was curious so we had the two works that we have um, in the kit. If you have a connection or um, something specific that you like about either one or both. Well, um, in the, the Carrie James Marshall piece, the, the one that's inspired by that, um, that is actually kind of a, 
that is a representation of my patio. And I, I was actually, that's actually from based on a sketch that I was going to paint anyway, because in my artwork, I like to show black people living life, not, you know, in a struggle, not, um, and not in a uh, constant bringing awareness or attention to my blackness, but to say that as a black person, I live my life just like a white person does, just like a Hispanic person does, like my everyday existence in my space. You know, I have a patio too. I like plants. I like okay. sunsets. I like, you know, sitting in my yard and enjoying my day. And I think that right now everything is so focused on how black is different and not so much how we're the same right and so when we're in our natural environment our natural space when we're out in public we have to put on i feel like a complete suit of armor these days to just move and feel safe as a black woman in an open space but when i'm at home on my patio i'm just me and i'm sure that when white people are home on their patio they're just them you know, that's something we have in common. But at the same time here, and, and that particular piece that I did, I added that the green, the greenery and the plants are alive. But then if you look out in the yard, it's snow and the tree has no leaves. You know, so here I am in my beautiful green space as a black person. But when I look out in the world, how do I see it right now? Right. I, it's not full of the life. It's not beautiful and green. There's a lot of turmoil. It's cold. We're in a winter, so to speak, right? And so that's kind of what I was trying to achieve, that juxtaposition of how I'm existing, but how I see the world, so. Yeah, for sure. Well, so for some of our uh, kids that are doing this, kids, like what would you like them to walk away thinking maybe about the art they've created with you or the art that they've seen, what would be kind of that final thought you would want them to think about? To not be afraid of what they may be feeling on in their, I always say what your gut and your brain sometimes don't always speak the same language. And so it's okay that if you feel something in your gut, but your brain's telling you something different, it's okay to express that and art is a way to do it, right? So you can have that intention in your heart or your gut and maybe you don't know how to act it out. And so the art's gonna help you maybe process that, how you intend to act that out, how you're going to show that what you feel is how you're gonna act. Or like you say, your actions are, are speaking louder than what the words are going in your brain telling you to do. Yeah, not to be afraid of yeah. it, to see it, express it. Because, you, you know, it's, I remember as a child that sometimes I was a, not ashamed, but maybe I felt um, that what I was about to say or do wasn't adequate or I'm not going to be able to explain it properly or I, maybe I don't even know the right words. Maybe I don't even know how to say it, what I'm feeling. And so that's where art comes into play because you can do that. You know, you can, and it doesn't have to be like crisp figures or, or, or like looking expertly done. You can do it with shapes and colors. You yeah. can do it with words, whatever it takes to express that through, you know, your artwork. I love that. Oh my gosh, Kenya Christian, I wish we could just spend the whole rest of the afternoon talking with you. I've loved it. Um, we definitely want to check out more of your work. And thank you so much for, um, yeah, helping us to create some work today and looking at uh, some of the pieces in our collection more. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for watching. Now, please feel free to go to the art making video that is related to Our Town by Carrie James Marshall. Remember to keep in mind what you have learned here as you have fun making some interesting and wonderful art.